Good morning, and thank you. Thank you for the invitation to this Whale Tales. Uh, Megan, Emma, Flip, Jim, thank you very much. Um, we'll come back to the breeding grounds after the, the previous two spectacular presentations. We'll come back to the basic. I, I, I prepared the presentation to don't expect too many spectacular things, but it's something good. Okay. Um, it's about the population units in the Mexican Pacific. What uh, do we know about this uh, subject? Um, <clears throat> and, and I will try to, I divide the presentation in three different uh, moments. First, I will present you and, and, and show you a little bit about Mexico and the places where the humbugs are. And then uh, talk a little bit of the history of the research on, on, the, on the whales. And finally, the subject, the population units that, that we know that uh, and what uh, we think about the status of the animals at the very end. Okay, um, North Pacific. And I hope we'll move. Okay. So this is Mexico, the other side than the yesterday presentation. And um, we have the peninsula of Baja California, and you can read Cabo San Lucas, Bahia de Banderas, Isla Reviejedo. But now we have more two places in the south of, of Mexico that are important for the talk and, and for the whales in, in the Pacific. And these are the Guerrero and Oaxaca, more, more in the south. So these are not the only place where humbugs are. The humbugs are in all the, the, the Mexican Pacific, but they are the places where there are people working and study them in the, in the, in the last years. Um, I just remember the, the Green Line is the Tropic of Cancer. So just to compare with the latitude of Hawaii or other places, and these are the, the area, the, the place where, the, where we are. So this is uh, the, the northern one, Cabo Los Cabos, and this is Cabo San Lucas. This arch is the, the end, the final end of the Baja California Peninsula. Uh, and uh, well, it's a place with, uh, it's a, a dry area, uh, semi-desertic, tourist, uh, with the uh, hotels and uh, developments, but some other places, uh, just the beaches and the sand. Then we will move to the mainland. Uh, this is Bahia de Banderas. Bahia de Banderas is a beach, a huge uh, bay, and in the east, different the northern part than the southern. But they have mountains and. Uh, some semi-desert and also hotels in the in the in the right. You you can see the four seasons, and I will talk about more about this hotel later. Um, <clears throat> and the southern part of Bahia Banderas is with more vegetation, small villages, and uh, some beaches. This is Bahia Banderas. Is where Puerto Vallarta is in the in the phone. Then we have Guerrero, it's more more south. Um, it's a it's a state with a very contrast uh, uh, human assentation populations. Uh, this is a fish uh, fishers camp and some whales to, to the, in the 
in the region and some villas. In Guerrero, there is uh, all another uh, tourist uh, destinations as Acapulco or Ixtapa, maybe you hear about those destinations. Then to the southeast, uh, we have Oaxaca. And Oaxaca is a similar place uh, with some also tourist destinations as Huatulco, maybe you know about them, but this is the mainland Mexico. And offshore Mexico, there are there is the archipelago de Revillagigedo. It's a little bit difficult to pronounce. But, and uh, they, they, there are, they are three, three islands, two in the, in the end of the, of the place. I, well, it's, it's the, in the, you can see the, the Socorro Island is, is the, the, in the, in the bottom right with the volcano there. Maybe it looks familiar for you. And uh, the whales are around the, the Socorro Island, and to the left of the of the red, it's not a circle, but oval, or, is the uh, the uh, Clarion Island. It's the island that uh, Jim mentioned yesterday, with the connections of Mexico and Hawaii, and also the whales are around the the Clarion Island. So this is the Mexican Pacific and the. Uh, sample of the different spots where the whales, the whales are distributed. And history of the background, that, that what do we know about the humbugs in, in Mexico? The first information that we have uh, comes from the uh, surveys, well, not exactly surveys, well, the discovery tax surveys lead back Dr. Dale Rice in the 60s, especially 65. Uh, he went to the Mexican Pacific to tag humpback whales, and his assistant by this time was uh, Ken Balcom. And uh, during these uh, surveys, they uh, got the first photo ID in Mexico. It's uh, the, the one that you'll see. It's, uh, Unfortunately, we don't have much with the whales in this in the recent time, but that one, the first photo ID in the Mexican Pacific from 1965. By this time, uh, uh, Dr. Rice estimate, just for I, uh, that uh, a couple of hundred humpback whales are, were distributed in the area where they surveyed that when mainland on, and also the Revillagigedo archipelago, just a, a, a couple of hundred humpback whales. And after that, uh, there were some abundance estimations. In 2000, in my PhD thesis, I estimate about uh, 3,000 humpback whales by, by uh, uh, the, the, the 90s. Uh, and at the end in 2000. In, in 2004, uh, thanks to the SPLASH project, the estimation for the Mexican Pacific was about uh, 4,500 whales. And that was the last abundance estimation. Now, with some efforts in different places, not, not a, 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 a good one, but with the, 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 the knowledge that we have now, we calculate around 8,000 uh, humpback whales in the Mexican Pacific. You remember in the in Megan pres yesterday presentation, she mentioned that in the 2004, a splash estimate around 10,000 humpback whales for the Hawaiian archipelago. So for to give you an idea, the, the comparison. Um, I, I started the humpback whales studies in 82, in 1982 in Bahia de Banderas. And this is the kind of, of boat that we use and our camp. And uh, let me show you, this camp is in the same place that now is the Four Seasons. 
unfortunately. Unfortunately for us, not for, well, it's a time change. Okay, after that, we have the fortune, I, I personally, and we uh, as a research group that convinced a, a, a Ken Balcom to uh, come with us to research uh, in Mex to Mexico to begin to begin a research on combat whales, and he is, he 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 did it for four years. We learn a lot of from from Ken. Um, and we we uh, we did the the winter uh, seasons of uh, banderas uh, of 87 to 91 in both banderas bay and los cabos um, okay and uh, uh, in in 92 uh, i i want to mention that Janichel uh, is with us. Uh, we have the, the opportunity to join him in an expedition to the Revigedo, especially to the Socorro Island. Uh, the, the objective was to tag some some whales. And um, well, in the in the in the left is uh, Dr. Anelia Guayo and Lorenzo Rojas, in, were in the trip, and in the right, Jan Michel. So history, and well, I know I know that all of you know about photo ID, but the photo was to remember me that this time for a change in the presentation. So now we'll go to some uh, uh, the results of the first uh, uh, investigations. This is a, a paper published in 2000. And it was the result of all the photo IDs from 83 to 99, I, I, I think. And the first uh, uh, vision that we have about where the Mexican whales go during the summer. Of course, for to do this, uh, 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 this kind of studies, it's necessary the participations of many research groups from different places, particularly from the feeding areas where the whales go, in order to compare the catalogs. We are talking for the, about the 90s, so it should be photograph with photograph, the comparison, and those were the results. Similar than the lines or the connection that Jim uh, uh, presented us yesterday, so at, at least let me tell you that from mainland, it seems that the connection is, is more strong to the west coast of Mexico, particularly to California. And in the Revillejido Islands, in the, in the left, upper left, the map, there are no whales that go to California. They go to other places in the, in the Gulf of Alaska. One year later, similar paper, but a big, big, uh, bigger one, uh, lead by John Kalambokidis, but many other authors about the connections and being present and show this this uh, map. But uh, the the idea of the migratory destinations of the Mexican whales was practically the, the same, with more information. Um, <clears throat> after this paper from John Kalambokidis, I should say that particularly Dave Matila uh, and others, but particularly him, had the vision that because the problems of the paper with John Kalambokidi is that to compare catalogs from one year with catalogs from other year, different efforts, different times, uh, it was difficult to conclude something strong. So Dave, talking with other, other researchers in the North Pacific, say we have to do a big effort at the same time in the different in the in the different areas in the north pacific and that uh, was the the origin origin of the splash project and the photograph is from the first uh, uh, meeting of the steering committee here in in maui it's in the uh, compact waste sanctuary 
So, the, yeah, you, uh, all of you know this, this map, but maybe you don't know this graphic, I hope. It's something new for you. And <clears throat> in the bottom, uh, uh, there are the different uh, breeding, breeding grounds of the humpback whales in the North Pacific. In the left, from uh, Philippines, then Okinawa, Ogasawara, the two areas from Japan, then Hawaii, then three places in Mexico, Revea de Gijedo, then uh, Los Cabos, or mainland, or Baja, let's say Baja, then Bahia Banderas, or mainland, is the same, and at the end, Central America. And the colors are how are related each of these breeding grounds with the feeding grounds. Um, I, don't, I can't, well, for, for example, in the left side, in the right side, in the Central America, the, the dark blue corresponds to California, Oregon area, and the other light color is uh, uh, Washington and Southern British Columbia. So it's clear that the Central America whales, based on a splash, migrate to the western, west coast of the United States and southern Canada. And um, in the other side, the, the, the whales from, well, this is Philippines. The, the, the Philippines was yesterday. So let's stay with the Mexican. The, the, the important here is the mainland, uh, Baja and Riviera. you can see the difference. Mainland ha has uh, the dark blue of uh, west uh, coast of the United States, uh, also Baja a little bit, but uh, the Revillejero archipelago don't have connections. And the other thing I would like to you pay attention is the similarity of the color distribution in Mex Revilla Gijedo, Mexico, and Hawaii. Well, this is splash information, splash results, based in photo ID. Also from splash, we uh, took a biopsy for to do a genetic analysis, and the, the, the leader of the genetic analysis was uh, Scott Baker, uh, now in the Oregon State University. And the uh, base in mitochondrial DNA, it's uh, haplotypes in the bottom right. It's a different haplotypes that they found in the North Pacific. And based on this, uh, he divide the different feeding grounds and breeding grounds, and then uh, connect based on the, the, the frequency, uh, which one are connected with which one feeding and breeding grounds based on genetic. But as you can read in the in the in the last, uh, I imagine. Um, it was necessary, he, 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 we concluded by that time that it was necessary to do some more uh, analysis, particularly by that time the new methods of mistock, uh, uh, mixed stock analysis. Well, that, that is with the plus results, and then come back to Mexico, a PhD student, my, my PhD student mine, uh, uh, did this uh, Mrs. Stock uh, analysis, and she found that in the with the with the splash results in Mexico, there are two different uh, population units. One that we call call it uh, offshore population units, with the main migratory destinations in uh, the Gulf Alaska, Aleutians. Kodiak um, and Russia, and one uh, coastal population unit 
with the main migratory destination in the west coast of the United States. Okay, um, so we have the, the coastal population unit in blue, the offshore in, in that color, but with the with the splash information, we we didn't know what happened in in southern Mexico because we didn't sample, we didn't we didn't pay effort in that part of Mexico for the splash project. So it was the next step for us was what happened with southern Mexico. And another PhD student just published last year. Uh, <clears throat> based in the, these new places that I told you, Guerrero and Oaxaca, uh, and also with the, with the co uh, collaborations of uh, the speaker that will be uh, later with Joel uh, from Nicaragua, she found that, uh, let me tell you what, what is this graphic. The, in the, in the bottom are the different uh, places in Mexico and Nicaragua, and they are from south to north. They are Nicaragua, Oaxaca, Guerrero, Oaxaca, eh, perdón, Colima, Bahía de Banderas, Mazatlán, and Los Cabos. And the, 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 as the size of the column indicates the movements of whales among one side with the other. For example, in, the, in Oaxaca, uh, the red color is Nicaragua. So the, the, they have a very high uh, interchange of whales with Nicaragua. The, the yellow color is Guerrero with them, then the Colima, and, and et cetera. So, uh, in the graphic, we can see that the southern uh, Mexico and Nicaragua, is, this, this means and Central America, move, they, they have a, a high interchange of whales among them. But northern Mexico, very few whales move to, to the south. And also, she compared the aplutides that we, I, 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 mean, I, I, I showed you before, and for example, this is the, the comparison between Los Cabos, this is Baja California Sur, and Guerrero and Oaxaca. They look different. And the, the, the main difference is, if you see the, the, the aplotypes, in the right side, it's blue and light blue. Those are the, aplot the main aplotypes for Central America. And in the left side is the A, A, A minus, A plus, E, which are the main appetites for Los Cabos. Well, then she compared Guerrero and Oaxaca appetites with Central America. And they were very similar. So the conclusion is um, ah, sorry. Again, now, as uh, uh, also Jim mentioned yesterday, we have happy way, no? and it's a great advantage to know what are the migratory destinations of the whales we did this algorithm on, of happy whale, and just to uh, show you the Revier Hedo have as main migratory destination, the Aleutians and some, some other places around, Russia and the northern Gulf of Alaska, and Oaxaca. Yeah. So it's clear the difference between the offshore uh, population destinations and the coast. Um, the southern uh, Mexico uh, aggregations, are coastal, no doubt. Oaxaca, Guerrero, Colima goes to the west coast in the United States. But the problem is here. 
en Los Cabos, Bahía de Banderas, Mazatlán, es a mix of whales from the offshore and coastal population. So when you see the migratory destinations, for example, of the whales of uh, Los Cabos in the, in the, or Bahía de Banderas, they go to the mainland Mexico, but also to the Gulf of Alaska. So now the, the, the our next uh, question or goal is how, how we will uh, differentiate in uh, we have the coastal, the offshore, and the Central America, in the Southern Mexico, which are the same from Central America. And all of the, of the three overlap in some places in Northern Mexico. Next, uh, next step is to know if this overlap is only, is, uh, well, in the, in the space, it's clear that it's an overlap, but maybe not, not in time, maybe some whales are sometimes some others, and the overlap is not that strong. We don't know. This is the, the next step that we wish we know. And um, so each one of these three uh, migrate to different places. And also one of the conclusions that I would like to underline here is um, about the, the DPS that uh, several of you know or hear, hear about the uh, <coughs> um, distinct population segments that the, in the U.S. administration use to divide the different populations of humbugs in, in the world. Um, there is one Mexico DPS in that uh, uh, and it seems that it's not real. In Mexico, there are more than one population unit. And we need to learn more, learn more about this differentiation, but for sure it's not only one. It's not a unique uh, population in Mexico. Okay, finally and shortly, uh, let me tell you that, of course, humpback whales are and whale watching attractive, very important, economic attractive, very important, but economic important. And the red, the red spots are humpback whales, uh, areas where the whale watching is, is uh, doing. In, in northern Mexico, there are other corals that uh, the, the green ones are gray whales, and, and then blue whales in Loreto and fin whales. But humpbacks are the red, red ones and is the the most ex uh, the extensive whale watching activity in Mexico. We have some, as in everywhere, some uh, treats for the whales, like the sheep strikes. And just in the, in the right side of the graphic, in the upper graphic, um, it's not easy to, to read. But the first column, the highest column, is Mexico, and the, then the other countries, and is the, the number of uh, sea strike reported in the, in the different places in the Eastern Tropical Pacific. The highest is in Mexico. And in the lower graphic the, uh, is the different species reported with ship strikes in the Eastern Tropical Pacific, and the highest of, uh, column is humpback whales. Um, and finally, um, I will take advantage to, to, to thank uh, Ed Lyman and particularly Dave Matila, because they start to teach, teach us in, in Mexico how to create a net for disentangle whales, particularly hump and whales. Now it's very successful. Uh, Ed visit Mexico uh, constantly and, uh, well, uh, it's, uh, of course, we have several cases of entanglement every year, 
but at least in different places in Mexico, there are teams prepared for disentanglement. Um, in the different places, there are different research groups, and it, of course, uh, as the, the information I present is from the, based on the effort of several, many people, researchers, students, and I, I think, yes, yes, thank you.